Welcome to the Success Journey Show. Let's travel together through the lives of individuals on the road to success. Hey, what's going on, travelers? It is Ricky Ventures and Marlon Madden, and we're back with you again for another week of the Success Journey Show. What's going on, Marlon? How you doing today, bro? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good today. I'm not a Lakers fan. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm from New York. You're, you're a sellout. No, I'm, so I'm not a sellout, New, man. I'm, just... I'm from New York, so I, I I can't be a Lakers fan, but I'm a LeBron fan. You're not from so, New York, man. You're from Jamaica. That, that's Come true, on, too. Now. You ain't got... That's true, too. That's true, too. I'm from Jamaica, so... <laughs> you're, you're the sellout. Yeah. You should be taking that energy <laughs> and taking it to Jamaica and having them form a team up, so... <laughs> Hey, we did get a bobsled team, and we did um, do a lot of things that we didn't get um, uh, um, sabotage. So don't yeah, act up for sake, because we'll, yeah. we'll get a basketball team and, and start killing people. You know? Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, you know. But yo, I, I'm, I'm feeling you. I, you know, I am a, a Laker fan. Um, it's kind of been kind of passed down to me from my father, a Laker fan. Um, and where's he from? He's from North Carolina. Jeez, he was a ma- he was a magic guy. He was a magic guy. Magic was his guy, man. So, uh, and I, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't become a Laker fan until Kobe came into the league. So before that, I was a, a, a you know rock with Michael Jordan, like most everybody in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, Kobe came in as a rookie, and that's been my story since, man. But uh, yeah, super happy, super happy for them uh, to host this this trophy, man, and. Um, all the hard work they put in, seeing a lot of the guys that they assembled on the team that, you know, went through a lot of adversities over the years yeah. in their career. Some have been to the finals but never won. Some had won finals before. Yeah. Some have been uh, never um, – or been on final team that didn't contribute a lot but were able to contribute a lot this time. You know, it's just yeah. so many different stories that came together to make this season great yeah. for them and in a bubble on top of that. So it's, yeah. it's, it's good. It's good. It feels yeah. good. Yeah, man. I, I think the the uh, one lesson I've listened to Skip and um and Shannon Skip Skip. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so um uh one thing I, I Skip was saying something like um LeBron saw the opportunity because and he locked in everybody else. You know, um, Paul George was saying he had some mental health stuff. Not diminishing that, but whatever. And um and other people wasn't locked in. I was like, that is the most even field they could ever get. Yeah. Ever yeah. any basketball player, that was the most even field you'd ever get to show what you could do. There's no fans. There's no court that's because you know you from playing basketball. You go on somebody else's court. You got to learn their yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Like, rim, I don't know. It, it, it's a rim a rim, but for some reason you hit it off the backboard this way at my gym. You got to put a little more English on the other gym. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. Like, uh, even playing field, no distractions. Everybody's in the same environment. Nobody has a, a $5 million house to go to and the other person have a $2 yeah. million dollar house. To, so everybody was even. So when he's talking about he took advantage, no, no, sir. He just mentally, he put yeah. himself in a space that he's yeah. there for a job yeah. and completed the job. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I love it, man. I love it. So, yeah, you know, I, I, I would say, though, I was more so excited that this season is over so that I can see my, uh, my, my first favorite player, second favorite team, get geared back up to start next season, which is the Warriors, Stephen Curry. So oh. that, 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 I'm, looking forward, I'm looking forward to seeing them back on the court, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, but then I don't think they're going to be what they used to be. Yeah, hey, we'll see. We'll they're see, missing, man. They're missing a super critical piece. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll see. Durant. <laughs> we'll see. We had to go to the pre Durant era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we'll yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, what's what else been going on your end? Anything, anything exciting, man? How are you making out with this in school? Oh, the in school uh, thing is going well. My son yeah. is. I have to, I have to make sure that I check up behind him for myself because I'm not a teacher. <laughs> but I have to make sure I check up behind him because I think they still have some little things that they have to do that I see. For I don't know if you ever heard of Lean Six or um, um, what's the new thing that everybody's doing. It's the same thing like Lean agile. Six. Agile, not agile. It's a, but anyway, it's how to yeah same thing how to make a process flow better. Mm-hmm. So from me being me that being my eye looking at stuff all the time, I see how they can have parents just come click onto one thing, find homework, 
they, they, they do, it's too. It's all over the place. All over the place for it's me. All over the place. Um, uh, so well, I talked to some of the teachers. I'm like, well, and they, of course they have to pay money to do that. But you're, you're seeing that the space of education is changing rapidly. Yeah. You know, college had been online for a while, but now high schools, you know, you had K-12, but now you have high schools are going to be able to say, hey, let's give this program or even, you know, elementary, whatever is going to say, I'm going to be able to give you this program and you, your kid don't have to come to school and still it's accredited through our school. So yeah, I think yeah. a lot of space stuff is changing and they'll get it better, but I'm, I'm really enjoying this, um, this home time. I think my son is too. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, my, mine are too, man. They're, they're enjoying it. Even though today that one of the teachers is like, oh yeah, some of the kids are coming back to school. I'm like, my son was like, wait a minute, are we going back to school next week? I was like, no, 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 not you, buddy. <laughs> not you, <man>. nope. <laughs> you. you're going to be sitting right here, right at home doing yeah. your stuff, man. Yeah. So now nah, it'd be like you said, it'd be interesting to see, man, how it all plays out. Um, you know, right before we go into just our announcements, man, it was crazy. I was just thinking right before the podcast, I was like, man, you know, flashback to last year at this time. And when you think about last year at this time, it was a completely different world. Totally different world. Totally different world, man. Like who would have thought that? And you, yeah, in your lifetime, you would you would experience such a great transition with such uncertainty of the future. You notice how you said a great transition? Yeah, so we're not looking at it as a great transition. No, no, what man. happen? It's it's it's. If you're optimistic, this is a time that you're seeing a lot of where you're, you could be a niche person. Yeah. Just like you're saying, that transition, you really see who really was just going with the flow, like you're saying. Yep, yep. And, and who, were, who was always innovative. Yep. You know, because Zoom, what we're on right now, they prepared for this, I think. Because right. they were able to say, here's my platform, I could do da da And then, of course, Microsoft caught up with their teams. Uh, we could, I think the security on Zoom is not the best. I know I'm, whoever's on Zoom is like, hey, you shouldn't say that, but <laughs> um, uh, it's not the best. It, Teams is better because we use it in the, um, in the DOD side, we use Teams. But Zoom to that's me because is they got a lot. better contract. That's yeah. all. That, well, you know, I can't say that. <laughs> they, <laughs> I can <confirm> or deny. <laughs> you got a better deal, so now they're going to bash Zoom. You know, that's how it all goes. Yeah, all yeah, yeah, yeah. Same people work in the same place. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but now, now you're so true. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They're ready. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's a different world. It's different world, man. And it all goes to the journey. I said all that because it all goes to the journey, right? We're all on a journey. Yeah. And we said it last week, you know, you put your, your location into the GPS and the GPS automatically knows, you know, where you're going and calculate the traffic and calculate the stop signs, traffic lights, cops, um, all these different things they can predict for you. But and your GPS of life it is not that clear cut, right? Mm. And you can be on that journey. You don't know when the next turn is. You don't know when to go straight. And it's like that uncertainty sometimes can make you feel a little bit uh, insecure. Yeah. Um, but we're just here to remind you guys that that's normal. That right there is a normal place to be in. Now, yeah. I, I, would, I would go on, go a little further but I mean, it may not be for, for everyone's audience, everyone's ears, but you know, there is a certainty in this world. And if you haven't tapped into that, that certainty, and I don't know what your belief system is or whatever that yeah, is, right. but um, it, it, if this didn't show you, COVID didn't show you something about having that belief system and who you believe in and what you believe in, what you believe on, man, Now's the time, because if you want to have that assurity, if you want to have that security, if you want to have that sense of peace, that's the only way you're going to be able to find it. So listen here, man, it's, um, it's, it's the journey. It's a journey we've all been born into. Yep. And last week, what was our, what was our quote? It was, it's there's two, two, two great yeah. times in your yeah. life, two great days, right? The day that you were born and the day you find out why, right? <laughs> and all in between that is a whole bunch of <laughs> yeah, 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 searching, yeah, yeah, right. you know. So, so, but yeah, let's jump right into it. Let's jump into it, Marlon. Man, we have an amazing guest with us today. Before he comes on, uh, just share with the travelers where they can catch right. up with us if this is their first time uh, tuning into the Success Journey Show. Hey, if this is your first time, and if you're a recording um, listener and viewer, 
Um, just remember the successjourneyshow.com is where you can find all our information. The Success Journey Show is our handle on Instagram, also on Facebook, on Twitter, the um, success underscore show. You can find us anywhere, anytime on any podcast uh, uh, platform. We've been, we've been, we put out a challenge that if you find, didn't find us on one of these platforms, you could write into us and we'll give you one of these shirts right here, our quad D's dream, drive, discipline, and diligence. And we'll send it out to you. And we haven't got anybody to send it out yet. So listen, and we're, remember, we're trying to get our followers up on YouTube because that wasn't our uh, focus until the pandemic happened. Um, we're trying to get our, our, our viewership up to uh, subscribers up to 1,000 um, by the end of the year. So like, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you're listening right now. And then um, you can rock with us always, all right? Yeah, love it, love it, love it. Well, travelers, man, you know, the last couple of weeks, uh, Marla and I, we, we sat down and rapped with you, talked about a, different, a lot of different things. Uh, and today we have a guest that is no stranger to the Success Journey show. Um, man, if you go back to episode 39, uh, the five star phenom, we have him back with us today. Our brother, our friend, um, the five star phenom himself, <laughs> Brian Keith. What's going on, brother? How you doing today, man? How are you today, man? Let's just <sighs> ready, 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 <laughs> man. I'm in the green room and we've had some conversations off screen just ready to talk man just yep. feel like i'm in the circle of brothers people that i trust you know what i mean love the t-shirt man that's a nice look my friend oh precious nice. oh, thank you thank you thank you we try man we try uh <laughs> just to let you let, let you know bk man um you you got you got a, a little a tall a tall order let's see a, a tall oh. order because i don't i don't want to i don't want to put no pressure on you but your show been, is, is in the top five views, man. I don't know what you said the last time, but people are gobbling. Woo. Top five, top five. You know? If this was a rap, if this was rap, they said top five dead or alive. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey, top five. I mean, I must be either Biggie or Pac or what? I mean, <laughs> hey, I'm one of them, right? Biggie or Pac. Like, man, I yeah, love it. I love it. Why well, tell you what, man? It's Good, man. It's good to have said something because, me, you know, as I get older, I'm 47, man, I got four adult, well, four daughters, two adult daughters. So mm. the question that I could imagine you asking me is, what I, what have I been up to? Man, Absolutely, that, man. Being, That's exactly I, where I, I want to go. go. That's exactly yeah, where yeah, I want to go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's been a okay, year, so man. It's been a year. Assuming that you were about to say that. Okay. Yeah, all yeah, right. Yeah. So the last, since I've been here, thank you so much for having me, by the way. I'm blessed by your content, blessed to know you as a friend. Uh, me personally, I've had an adult daughter. Two of them have moved out. Mm. So I have two adult daughters who live on their own, right? That's what it's all about. You're trying to get these kids out of the house. And I was concerned about college and concerned about some choices, but I had to pull back and say, you know what? They're off the door. If they're mm -hmm. off the door, I did my part. Yeah. yeah, I did my part. But also, yes, sir. Also what I did in... um. And it's almost been a year now, so it's been a little while since we've spoken, but the business that I had, I had a carpet room and a poultry cleaning business for 10 years, 10 months, and 10 days. I had it about 10 months and 10 days too long. I actually have get, uh, got, walked away from that business, um, decided I didn't want to do that anymore, and I've moved on into formally public speaking, 100% speaking, mm. mentoring, and coaching. And so it was one of the hardest things I had to do. I knew I should have done it guys, but I was, I was a leery of doing it and I didn't understand it because I'd become that guy. I'd become the entrepreneur. I'd become the hundred thousand dollar guy. I had become the guy that pulled himself up by his bootstraps. And so my identity was wrapped into what I did. Yeah. You become mm. that guy that, that had the experience with the, the chicken coop. Remember that story? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, <laughs> yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you, and you, and you were so stuck in the thing, and you know you think you're not susceptible, but then you really are because we we get identified by the things we do, and those things make us feel good. Someone uh, affirms us, right? They confirm who we are. They tell us that we're amazing. Oh, you do this great, and you're like, oh. And so you want to do that thing again, because, right, because dopamine is flowing through your body, yeah, oxytocin, yeah, yeah, yeah. serotonin, and yep, endorphins, yep. right? That thing yep. is flowing, and you're like, ah, oh, I want to feel that again. 
And if you've mastered your craft, of course you want to do it again. But the limitation was I began to experience some health issues, some health challenges. And what I realized was that to my travelers who are believers, I stopped doing what God said to do. Mm -hmm. Meaning that the blessing was there, right? The cloud, the manna was pouring over where I was, but the manna had stopped. And I was still trying to stay stuck, not because I was doing a bad thing. I, was, I wanted to stay there for good reasons. The prestige, mm -hmm. the income. I got, I'm married to, I am married to an African-American woman. A sister, <laughs> no R. Sister. <laughs> Woo! And so I was trying to sell her on the idea you are going to leave $100,000 and do what? Make videos? Really? <laughs> really? That's what you intend to do? That's your big plan? That's my big plan. Uh, <laughs> I'm right. And so it has actually worked out. And this was pre-COVID. Mm. And I would like to have a conversation about COVID. But I'll tell you this. In the time, in the season of COVID, and I'll tell you what I've, I've got a revelation about this moment that I think might be helpful to the travelers, is that this is not a moment to be afraid of. It's not a moment to stop doing what you're called to do. In fact, I believe some people have pressed pause mid-March mm. on their hopes, their dreams, Correct. everything they yeah. said, yeah. right? And as we're speaking now, this is the 42nd week, actually it's the 41st week of this year, which means that the baby that, was that you inseminated yes. in week one and two in January is now being born. Mm. Right. So all of those hopes and those dreams, as we enter the fourth quarter, your baby is now being born. What was that baby? What was that hope? What was that dream? Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about Corona, Corona means crown. <laughs> it means crown. It means garland. It means to bestow with a crown or a garland. And isn't when a baby's born, don't we call that crowning Crowning? as well? Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so watch this, guys. Watch this, guys. At the very moment where we're experiencing the worst pain ever known to man, because it was God that said, woman, you're going to have pain. So we know that that's an intense pain, right? Mm -hmm. Blood pressure jumps up. In fact, I still believe to this day there are more women that die from childbirth than a lot of other ailments combined, right? Mm -hmm. so at this moment where this baby is crowning, as the head is coming out of the vaginal opening, and you're experiencing your worst moment, it's also connected to the moment when you see the baby, Most which beauty. is your best moment. Yeah. Right. So the ugly and the beauty are combined. The worst and the best is connected. So your, your crowning season, this season right now, is where you see the ugly and the beauty come together. Mm. And if you can just get past the ugly, mm. if you can just get past the crowning, <laughs> if you can just get through the travail, if you can just Woo! let your cervix open, Right. Woo! And that baby that you've been hoping for, praying for, asking for, it's coming. It's imminent. But you got to press on. You got to keep pressing. Mm. It's not time to stop. It's oh, not time man. to stop. We went straight there, man. You went straight <laughs> there, BK. <laughs> you, you, you know, oh, and, man. And, and Ricky, go. this ties into our last week with mm -hmm. that why. Ricky brought up a very big point last week about there's some people that's doing that's doing something in a space that's not, we're not talking about somebody that's doing drugs. We're just talking about somebody that's doing something positive. Right. And that person feels like that person has to come to that why moment also is, is that space really where yeah. they need to be. So yeah. just like how you were saying, you know, you're doing something positive, the hundred thousand uh, dollar over man. Um, yes, you, you, you had your own business notoriety, everybody yeah, you pull up yourself by your bootstraps, but were you supposed to be there? Yeah. Well, I was, but that season had come For to the an season. end. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There you and go. And the beautiful thing, if we really know about those seasons, Marlon, we got to go all the way back to when the children of Israel, these are the people that were in that desert. They were there for 40 years. When they went over into Canaan, and all they did in Canaan, which was the promised land, was eat a grape. They ate some grapes. That's <laughs> it. What's interesting was they ate that grape, but as soon as they ate the grape, the manna stopped. Mm. <laughs> This is in Joshua, right? Yes. I want to say Joshua five or six. As soon as they ate from the promised land, as soon as they, as soon as I started talking on a little show called the Success Journey Show, right? <laughs> the communication aspect of this thing, this 
God was able to show me a larger portion of my my purpose. It was not that it, my purpose hasn't changed. Yeah. I just got to the point where he can now show me more mm. because I passed the test. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. now that the man is gone, man of God, now that the manna has left that one seat, it, the manna's not done. It's just done in that season. The grace is now in the new place. Correct. Correct. Right. So the grace is now in the promised land. And so to the people who think that they are, that you've missed it, that you are maybe outside of the will of God, that you made a mistake, you didn't make a mistake. It's just time to make an adjustment. It's time yeah, to turn. Sure. And so that's another thing that Corona means. It means to turn, right? It means to turn. It means to shift. It means to bend. And so what is another word for turn? Another word for turn is repent, to change your mind, to change your state of mind, to change your direction, renew. and to change your strategy. Yes, sir, to renew. So mm -hmm. it's time to just simply come up with a new strategy to renew some old ideas, some old plans. It's not done. It's not over. It's just yeah. time to look at something differently. Okay, pull back. Am I a carpet cleaner or do I clean things? What do you clean? You clean mm. people's minds. You bring edification to people's homes. Well, what do you do? You edify. Okay, well, what do you do? You bring clarity to confusion. Well, what do you do? You help people understand certain things and you move things around so that now it's clear. So, oh, wait a minute, guys. So I'm not a carpet cleaner. I'm an edifier. That's in the scripture. Wait a minute. So I've always been an edifier. Yeah. So now instead of me edifying carpet, I edify souls. I edify mm -hmm. minds. I edify hearts. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. If we keep looking for those through lines, mm -hmm. if we keep paying attention, because they're there. Yeah. Right? They're there. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love it how you're saying that. And travelers, I want you to get it. Um, and he's giving you snippets. If you have not listened to go back to episode 39, the five-star phenom and to hear uh, Brian's full story of where he was a year ago. I actually went back to see when we released. It was actually July uh, 25th, uh, 2019. Wow. So wow. a little over a year then yeah. you've been yep, on before here. Before I shut down. Yeah. Yep. And mm -hmm. it's like, I hope, hope it, wasn't, it wasn't us that shut you down. Man. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it was, I'm not, not going to lie to you. It wasn't you, but it was certainly experiences like this. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you to say that something that I said produced life, mm -hmm. that's a sign. That is like eating a grape in the promised land. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I want you guys to see this, right? We're in this. He's it. He went through now, made a shift. He was on the journey. Yeah. And when we were talking to him last time, he wasn't talking about, no, I'm leaving. You know, he wasn't calculating 10, day, nope. 10 years, 10 days, 10 months. You know, he was just <laughs> too much. He right. was like, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is where God has placed me in this journey. Right. This is what he did for me all the way up until this point. And this is how I know I'm living right. in my purpose at this point. Right. And now you hear him a year later. He said, wow, I was there living in my purpose while God was preparing me to step into this purpose right here. Right. And not right. only did God, was he, God make it clear to him you know that he wasn't a cleaning serve carpet cleaning service but where he where he, where he is now an edifier and and and, and helping provide clarity for people's lives god yeah. also provide clarity in his mind wow. and he was only able Ooh. to do that because he was always looking and pursuing um knowing that he was on his knowing that he was on a journey so let me break it down because everyone's like oh man you're talking about the bible you're talking about holy spirit and you know cleaning inside all that out let this so let's break it down, right? <clears throat> when you're on a journey and you have two people, uh, two or you're traveling, right? You get into your vehicle and you go. Um, there's there's a person that you see that they're driving when they have a sense of urgency about getting where they want to go, right? When they they're driving, the, and and a rest stop comes, the the most they're doing at the rest stop is getting gas. That, that's that's it. That's it. That's getting gas, jumping back in. Why? Because they prepare themselves for the trips. Right. In their car, there's water. In their car, there's food. In the car, there's snacks. So I don't need to stop and pick up anything because I'm going to a destination. Versus another person is saying, you know, I'm going to make a trip out of this. And they go to the rest stop. And then everyone gets out of the car. Everyone goes to the bathroom. Everyone gets in the long line at uh, uh, whatever, uh, Burger King or whatever, yeah. maybe uh, yeah, Starbucks. You know, veggie, <laughs> veggie burger. <laughs> you know, look around in the, in the little gift shop they got there at the, at, the, at the thing. And then they finally get back in the car 30 minutes, 40 minutes later. And then, they, oh, we're back on our journey again. 
and then the next right. rest stop comes and do the same thing. Right. So there, there, there's a difference. The person that's, hey, I'm constantly looking for right. to get to my 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 destination versus someone say, I'll get there whenever I get there. If you're in your life, and I said all that because if you're in your life and you're traveling right now, and you're that second person where you're stopping at every pit stop and you're going over, I guarantee you, you're going to miss. You're going to miss opportunities to shift. You're going to miss opportunities to maybe even miss, uh, be rerouted different different ways or jump onto different paths versus yeah. that person that is solely focused on, hey, I'm getting to my des- destination. I'm not stopping. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep looking. So now when an opportunity came that says on the GPS, hey, if you take this route right now, I can save you 13 minutes. Mm. Wow. Wow. Mm. That person that stopped at the, at the, pit, the rest stop, you missed that. They you missed that sign. They missed that right. 13 minutes. It's not going to be 13 <laughs> minutes anymore when they come back out. I don't know right. what it's going to be. I right. Right. But I hey, it. I'm going to click that. I'm going to go 13 minutes faster. I'm going to get there. Why? Because I'm focused on getting to my destination. So I just want to break that down to our travel just a little bit. And in the traveling sense, I don't, I, we want to hit everybody on every level. Right. Right. So, that's, that's so, so, so Brian, man, you know, you had this revelation, you, you yeah. shift focus. You're mm-hmm. now on this, this, this new, I won't even say new journey, but this, that you're living in this, in this new space, in this new season, right? right? right. Mm-hmm. You know, like you said, you know, you're supporting a family, your wife and, and, and everything mm-hmm. you guys are coming mm-hmm. together. And she says, Hey, you know, you're going to give up a hundred thousand dollar, <laughs> you know, business that you started up, not just a job, a business that you, that you had. And right. now you're going to shift directions. Right. Talk about that transition. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Sit in that go for a over second, so man. well. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I will. I just let me go back. I'm. I get a little nervous. It didn't go over super well with my wife, but mm. I will share this with you though. This is what she told me about probably year one of the carpet cleaning business. She said, and she had to come to me, and she saw the success. She saw the money. She saw the income. She saw her check, <laughs> and she yeah. saw the money I was making. Yeah. And because I made triple, quadruple times the money she was making. And she, she was a believer at that point. But she told me something. She said, I didn't think it would work. Mm. So 10 years ago, I earned a confidence in the way I do things from mm. my wife that's benefiting me in this moment. Mm. There was a dedication there was a, a sense of urgency. There was a mastery of the craft. There was a watching because she saw me work up from used equipment. And I, I took a van that was a family van. And I took the seats out, guys. And I took the van to uh, Earl Shot, And I got it painted white. And so it looked like a company van. But it cost me, you know, a few thousand dollars. And I was working my jelly. And she would see me. So sometimes I would take the, the seats out and put the equipment in. But then on Sunday, I'd put the seats back in and we go to church in the same van. And <laughs> she saw this effort. You know what I'm saying? And we lived on the second floor. And I would carry this heavy seat up the stairs to put it on the balcony to cover it with a tarp. And she saw the effort. And what I'm saying is that I believe my wife is not complaining now i believe she has my back now number one because i have a relationship with the most high she sees me getting up every day she sees me putting in the effort and effort doesn't lie now maybe outcomes aren't mm. always what we want them to be but you can measure effort yeah, yeah. you yeah, can yeah, measure yeah, effort yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm not, I, I don't want to give you the impression that I've got it all together and that she is behind every decision I make. I don't think so. But she trusts me. She said this the other day. She said, I trust you. Mm. I trust you to make the right decision for our family because I let her know because she's, I've known my wife for 26 years. We dated for 26 years, married for 13. So mm. she's got a history. One thing she knows about her husband is that I will go to work. She yeah. knows that about my husband. So, so to the travelers, if you don't have a background of going to work, this might not be <laughs> this might not be the best advice for you. So, so reputations do matter. I mean, you know what I mean. Reputations do matter. But what I will say is that there is a conviction. There is a conviction. There is a. You talked about it earlier. You alluded to it. You said there's a body language. At least that's what I heard you say in my mind. In my mind, that you said that there is a body language connected to. A person that's deliberate. So, for example, you go to a restaurant and that person comes in and the person that's about to serve you just got there like you did. 
they, they scramble to open the door. They, they, they're tucking their shirt in. They're scrambling to get behind it. The, they're cutting the oven on. I'm like, whoa. If that ever happens to me, I'm turning around and I'm walking out because that is about to be a bad experience, right? Because he is not ready and prepared, right? No. So I was coming up. I'm a little older. So we used to have this term called not just being on time, but be on task. Mm-hmm. You have to be on task. Yeah. You have to be ready to go suited and booted. You have to be ready to go. You have to know your craft, know what you do. And I'll even go this way. Not only do you need to know what your purpose is in this world, but you also need to know what your calling is. Different things. Then you need to know what your gifting is. Totally different thing. Then you need to know what your core values are. What do you stand for? Then you need to know what your core vices are. What do you fall for? Then we get down to the list and we need to know what is the dream? What is the mission? What is the vision? Then we find out what a lot of people are asking about. They say, I want to know what my purpose is. You really want to know what your assignment is. You actually Mm -hmm. do know what your purpose is. Mm -hmm. You know what your purpose is. What you're asking about, what is your assignment? What am I to do right now? What am I to put in my hand at this particular moment? But here's mm-hmm. the thing, here's the thing. If you're not diligent in one, it's hard for people to come around you and believe in what you're doing. My mm-hmm. mother gave me the best compliment today. She sent me a text message. She just had a competitor. Again, like I've not cleaned the carpet for a year, at least over a year, right? Uh, well, 15 months now. And she said that she had one of my competitors come out to clean the carpet. Hey, we lost your video. Oh, there, oh, we they're back, they're back. there we go. There we go. Yeah, she had one of my competitors come out and clean her carpet. And she told me that that competitor, <laughs> she said, son, you spoiled me. Mm. You spoiled me, son. She said, you spoiled me. Nobody does it like you did it. And it just was the, the most awesome compliment. What she was telling me in so many words was, son, everything you touch, you give it your best. You mm. give it your all. Mm. And that's what I do, bro. I don't care what it is. I'm giving you my all. I'm giving you my everything. No matter what it is, I'm going to give you my all. And so my advice to the travelers is, I don't care if you are in your particular field right now. Yeah. You might have to sweep floors right now. Yeah. You might not be in, you might have to be an intern in the company that you intend to work for, but they can find out about your work ethic. Yes. They can find out about your character. Yeah. They can find out about, do you show up on time? They yeah. can find out about your integrity. What are you going to do? What are you willing to do when the stakes or better yet, when no one's looking and the cameras are off, what do you do in the meantime? Mm-hmm. What do you do then? Do you, have, do you have the integrity in those moments? And I think a lot of times the reward of what we do when no one's watching is what we get sometimes when people are watching. That's mm-hmm. the reward we get, right? When we sow those seeds in darkness, we reap them in light. And so that, you know, I mean, maybe we can debate that back and forth, but that's my personal belief system. And so when people know you, based on what you do. There's a sense of mastery that I've been able to develop over the years. So no matter what I touch, people trust me. I've got clients who were carpet cleaning clients, but now they're listening to me speak. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. But they're listening to me speak because of the way I carry myself as their carpet cleaner. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. The heart that I have, you know. Yeah. So I have a two- The way I can, please. Two, four questions. Two full questions. So now, I'm, you ha- you, uh, I'm sure you had a, because you had such a illustrious business, you had a clientele. So did. Di- did you, first one, how did you transition for that? Meaning, did you um, go through the acquisition process of, uh, of selling that off to someone or whatever I did you did look into it. Yeah, I did look into it. And unfortunately, the, uh, it's hard to sell a cleaning business. I'm not saying it can't be done. Yeah. I'm just saying it's hard to sell a cleaning business. And I looked into it, uh, a little disappointed there, but what I did do was I couldn't sell it for what I wanted to sell it for. So what I did was instead of selling it or better yet giving it away, what I did was all the guys that I've known over the years, as I would get calls, and I'm still getting calls to this day, I send that work out to them. Okay. And no charge. Mm. No charge. So because I couldn't get what I wanted from the business, I turned it all into a seed to sell. Does that make any okay. sense at all? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So I turned. So I mean, I'm talking about even as I mean, as much as as I mean, yesterday I was sending jobs out. I'm sending out work to wow. people. So people have eaten. I've I fed four to five guys. Wow. Steady work mm. because of what I was able to do in the business. Yeah. Wow. And so I turned it into an opportunity to be to be a blessing to some other people. Yeah. And so I need that harvest now. I need that harvest in what I'm doing now. So for me, it was more strategic to sow that seed. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and then the second question is now that you said you started to do the transition a little bit before the pandemic. I did. Um, Actually, so, uh, official. Well, please, please finish. Well, no, officially when? Officially when? So we could get a time. Well, frame. no, no. I went. I went all in on speaking January first of this year. So I went all mm -hmm. in, hundred percent. So no, it was before the pandemic. Okay. So be that as before the pandemic, you know, you had. I don't. I don't know where you, where your target audience was or where you were getting engagements from sure. but you were probably going into a building going in front of people speaking somebody mm -hmm. inviting you somewhere all these different yeah. things then yeah. march about march 14th because that's that i can remember that's when everything kind of shut down march 14th march. everything shut down and now yeah. you're in this new you're seeing something you're like man yes this is where i'm supposed to be and then yeah. that comes up <laughs> talk, about, talk about what did you do in order to te technologically get yourself to where you can be still doing what you're doing and right. how did you take that hit on march 14th when you did that full transition in january man great question great question so my my first answer is i don't know i mean that's honest let me just say i don't know mm -hmm. uh, but my but but my second answer is before i started before we hit the pandemic i, I was doing what is called a dime devotional so i came up with something that I can put out on every single day, day to day basis, right? I call it the Dime Devotionals. I do one at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. And, and I wanted to do something. What is the handoff from one business to the next thing? So I told you I left that business at 10 years, 10 months, and 10 days. Yes. So, so I've used that to my advantage. So the Dime Devotional, D-I-M-E, which stands for Daily Inspiration, Motivation, and Exhortation. Love it. I'm dropping Dimes at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. Yes, it, is, exactly. it, is, it is a throwback to what it's the handoff from that business to this business. Correct. So I started doing those before the pandemic. So, and I believe God spoke to me and told me this. This is what he showed me. He showed me that it was a season for us to not start something new in the pandemic. It was to do like, for example, consider God the quarterback and you're the receiver. Yeah. And whatever route you had already been running before the pandemic, don't start running a different route. Because mm. God has already thrown the ball. Mm. And, and if you know a good, you know what I mean? So yeah. if you know a great relationship between a great quarterback, and I hope everybody can follow, a good quarterback and a good receiver, they trust each other. So yeah. that quarterback has released that ball before that receiver hits that spot, assuming yeah. he's going to hit that spot. Mm. So what I'm saying is what God showed me to do in the pandemic is not to do something brand new. Don't start the Corona Chronicles. You know what I mean? Don't start the <laughs> pandemic pamphlet. You know what I mean? No, he was like, no, continue doing what you've been doing and continue to do it at a high level. And so you got to stand and then don't get sucked into, and I, and I was going to share this later, but I'll share it now. A lot of people have pressed pause. You talked about mid-March. A lot of people have pressed pause on their purpose. Mm -hmm. Then, not only was there the pandemic, Rick, uh, then we went from the pandemic, then we went to the economic challenge. Then we went from the pandemic to the economic challenge to now racial issues and racial challenges. Yeah, yeah. And so, and I sat back, I didn't get involved in any of it, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to be insensitive to people, but I sit back and I pay attention and I watch. And mm -hmm. I saw a lot of people who were up in arms about all three or one or the other. Yeah. And what they did was they walked away from what God called them to do. Hmm. So, so if you were to ask me a question, what is the biggest challenge in this particular moment? The biggest challenge in this moment is to not be distracted. Mm, not be, say that again. A lot of distraction. Not be distracted. Mm. Yeah. So, so let me, because I do believe that there's an adversary. Yeah. I do believe there's an adversary. So, and I don't, and I believe that adversary is not after our lives. Watch this. I believe he's after our purpose. Yeah. Mm. He's yeah. after what you're called to do. Because yeah. inside of what you're called to do is the next vaccine. Inside of what you're called to do is the next um, antibiotic. Inside of what you're supposed to do is the next um, architectural plans for a car or the next computer yeah. or the next yeah. airplane yeah. or the next abacus or the next you know, computer language inside of the purpose is what God called you to do. So if he can, if the enemy can take your purpose, then he can take that life changing, world altering idea from you. Yep. Yep. Simply by distracting you. It's so cool. that's what's at stake right now in this moment. What's at stake is our purpose. And so to answer your question more than 100 percent, I dug into my purpose and not out. 
Mm. I didn't get distracted. I dug in. So I'm, yes. I'm talking twice a day. I got putting up two videos a day. Yeah. Yeah. Going in. I yes. don't care who shows up. I'm showing up. Yeah. It doesn't make a difference. Yeah. And I'm preaching my head off. It doesn't make a difference who shows up. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. And so that's what we got to do. We can't be distracted. We can't be moved by what's happening on the outside. What did God tell you? What has been your plan? What was that dream as a little boy or a little girl? Do it now. Yeah. Do it now. Because if you don't, if you let, and I call it, um, oh goodness, uh, dots, distractions, offenses, traumas, and self-inflicted wounds, all four can come and take you off your box, right? You can get distracted, right? Somebody wants to take your time. Somebody wants to take your energy. Somebody wants you to waste your gift. That's a distraction. Or somebody can tick you off real good, call yeah. you out of your name. We're watching stuff on the screen that is heart-wrenching. Yeah. As a man with copious amounts of melanin in my skin, to yeah. watch certain things on the screen, it is gut-wrenching. It is hard to see. Yeah, but yeah. I noticed the trend. So we're in 2020, right? Yeah. And we're seeing, and it has to be a certain scenario. It has to be a police officer with a certain type, with a certain complexion. And it has to be a, a, a victim with a certain complexion yeah. in order for it to rise to a certain level to mm. catch our attention. Mm. The last time we saw that was 2016. Mm. Castile and, yeah. and I, no disrespect, but that's the last time we saw the rioting and the last time we saw the people in the streets uh, protesting. When yeah. did we see it before that? 2012. 2012, yeah, uh, Trayvon Martin, right? You got it. When did we see it before that? Yeah. 2008. Yeah, yeah, with um, Rodney King. Well, oh, two, well, Rodney no. Rodney King was all the way back in 90 something, yeah. And, but you, you just stole my thunder. If you go all the way back, Rodney King was 92. Yep. And it's consistent. It was, they were all election years. What am mm -hmm. I suggesting? I'm suggesting there's a pattern. I'm <laughs> suggesting that the scripture says that the sins of the father are transferred to the third and the fourth generation. So that means that there is a trauma connected to what has happened to black bodies in this country, period, point blank. It doesn't make a difference if you think it's right or wrong. There's a trauma connected to it because we've seen it before. We've all seen those images. So if I see a body dangling even if, it's, if it, even if it has nothing to do with it, it triggers something in me yeah. Yeah. that I inherited from my great, 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 great grandfather. Yeah. So what happens is this, watch this, Rick. If you can remind me of what traumatizes me, you can get me emotional. Correct. If you can get me emotional, I'm, not lo I'm no longer logical. Yeah. If I'm no longer logical, I can't focus on my purpose. If I don't focus on my purpose, then I have actively forfeited what God called me to do because I let you trick me into pissing me off. You traumatize me. Yeah. And it's my own fault. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, what you're seeing what, when, when this first started happening with me, um, the riots and everything. And I was telling Ricky, you know, they're going to go through that, but there has to be, what's the plan for after, right? What's What's going to happen after? If everybody's going to riot, then disseminate, and then it goes up in the right. air, and then right. when it happens again, we come, you, you come back down, and you flop on it like, like vultures again. Ah, yeah, right. Again. What you're talking right. about is those, is those is, what I would like to see is those plans. What is the action that we're going to take based off what we're seeing? What is right. going to happen? And we can't really see that definitively because right. there's a lot of emotions yeah. right. that's involved. Right, yeah. And I don't want to diminish the emotions. No, 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 sir. But you, but there has to be a plan. No, sir. Because I could be emotional. My wife, oh, I love you, girl, I love you. We get married, and I don't have a job. I don't have a house to put you. <laughs> your actions don't, or your actions are not consistent with your words. Yep. Mm -hmm. But I want to double down on what you just said about I don't want to diminish anybody's feelings. Or what you, I do believe you have a right. It is logical and linear for you to feel the way you feel. So let me make sure I'm clear on that. I feel it too. But what I cannot do is become so emotional that I'm no longer able to do what I'm supposed to do in this earth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can't let that happen. Yeah. I can't let you steal from me what I'm put on this planet to do. And so and if we're not careful, that's what's happening around us. Because that's what's at hand. Your life. Now, if you think that the enemy wants your life, you're mistaken. He doesn't want your life. He wants your purpose. Mm -hmm. Because in your purpose are multiple lives. Correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man. And so that's the challenge, man. 
We're it. talking about language, man. Rick and I've been talking. Yeah. About this. You know, you know why I like Floyd Mayweather. Um, outside of the ring, he has whatever he has. But I'm talking about the, just as a boxer because I'm able to sure. eyes and say I like you as a boxer. So gotcha. as a boxer, look at the fight when he fought with Zab Judah. I don't know if you like boxing, but he fought yeah, Zab Judah. I saw it. He got in his head. There was a ruckus in the ring. Floyd Mayweather knew his task was to win that fight. That's every boxer going to the ring to win. There was right. a ruckus in the ring that the trainers jumped in the ring and there was a big fight. Zab Judah actually punched Floyd Mayweather with his um, uncle, God rest his soul, um, um, Roger Mayweather. Right. Floyd went to his corner. Exactly. Exactly. And said, Got him. It's all clears, I still have his task. Right. Got him. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Yep. Yep. And you know what? In Zap, he played with so emo so many emotions. And so, and I love the microcosm he created there. That's beautiful. So if we can look at that, who are we? Even though he may have been justified in his anger, in his frustration, most of us may have logically made the same move, but did it benefit him? Because now we look to Mayfield as greatness and we don't even talk about Zap anymore. No, no. we don't. Mayweather, everybody's like, hey, you are, you're it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. I, it, we don't want to diminish what well, I'm going to let you go rip. I, we don't want to diminish the feeling because just like you said, I get the feeling. You know, yes. I, I, I'm a little mocha, but I still. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got three shades. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? But I, I, I'm definitely team Jigaboo. I know, I know what team I'm on. I know. I know. I'm not, I'm right? not confused. So, I, I know where I would be in the mix. <laughs> I'm a little closer to the house. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Right? Yes, <laughs> I understand it. You know what I mean. So, I feel yeah. it, but we have to. Right. There has to be some action that logical and how we're going to take over this thing. Rick, Rick, go ahead. I don't want to. Yeah, you, no, man, travelers, man. I, I hope you guys are getting the essence of where we're going with this. And um, right. you know, distractions, man. Distractions can destroy everything. Distractions right. destroy. You know, and, right. and and every single time that you're you are distracted. Not only are you delaying the, your purpose or you getting to your end point, of, I'm going to say end point, to fulfilling uh, what it is for your life, you're also hindering another person fulfilling what they're supposed to do. Because yeah. if you believe you're here just to satisfy you and to satisfy your needs, then one, you're never going to get to where you're supposed to be in life. Mm-hmm. But two, is like your 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 i want to say your pinnacle i don't want to feel like there's a completeness to it because there's always a, a level to go up but when you're in in stride i would say um it allows the other people that you're supposed to impact to to stride as well right and allows them to move as well you know you look at a team of of of, of I mean, we're doing a lot of sport analogies today. Yeah. <laughs> but we're just going yeah. with it, right? We could just do a team of uh, one last a meritocracy, right? It's yeah, the right? one true meritocracy, right? Yeah, you have um, you go uh, runners or, or bikers, mm-hmm. long distance, things of that nature, and they have their, their team. Their teams are set up for a purpose. You know, you have the guy that's that's running in front of the squad, right? right yeah. to, to, to take off some of the weight of the yeah. uh, uh, of the win and the load and to set the pace uh for the other teams coming behind him but he's not running it intending to win the race right <laughs> right. 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 right that's good Ooh, there's that's someone good. else on his team yes prepared and ready mm-hmm. to take yes. the lead right yes. but if he doesn't do his job mm. then that person that on his team is ready to take the lead guess what he'll never ever be able to be in position to win Right. Yes, right. And yes. when he wins, guess what? The whole team wins. Everybody. Everybody, Everybody gets wins. a ring. Yeah. So and, and so look, look at that strategy and, 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 and think about your life. It's like when you're moving, you're not just moving for you. Man, you're moving. I don't know where uh, on my journey, I have no idea when I take my last breath where I'm gonna be. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know. Right. Yeah. But I do know this that mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. kids are coming behind me, my family, yeah. my boys that are coming behind me. So right. I need to make sure when I'm done, they're positioned to be able to, I don't even know, a slingshot off of me. Right, right. And right. jump into a, a, right. a leading running position yes, in sir. life. Catapult. 
Yeah, catapult. Yeah, like there we catapult. go. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. so th that's what we're here doing. But if you are distracted, that mm -hmm. can that can not even just can it will. Ooh, oh, absolutely. Boy. Woo! Yes, sir. Good. Destroy yes, sir. Your, your Imagine the guy yes, the that's the pace setter that's supposed to be, you know, because if you if you know anything about running or or, or or driving behind somebody, it's let more effort when you're in that person's draft. So they're building right. the draft so that person's using less effort. So when they're time, they could take and they could beat the other people. Imagine that guy right. got distracted by somebody else and start thinking, I need to win this race. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Some have done it. Some have done it, right? Kobe and Shaq. Yeah, yeah. Kobe and Shaq. We could have shared it. Yeah, we could have shared the glory, but one had to be bigger than the other. I don't know who was who, but, you know, one had to be bigger than the other. Right. They should have kept three it. more rings right there, brother. That's three more yeah. rings easily if... Easy. Yeah. They could have probably... Anyway, anyway. Let, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I got a couple of more thoughts on what you guys are yes. saying. And so, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, so, man. So to the, to the travelers who are listening, and I'm specifically referring to... so. Who am I called to speak to? Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. I'm called to speak to a very unique group of people who I call pictures, right? And I call them pictures because it stands for pioneers, innovators, creators, trailblazers, underdogs, revolutionaries, extraordinaries, and strategists. I'm speaking to more than just entrepreneurs, right? Mm -hmm. But I am speaking to people who move and their minds are entrepreneurs. Because again, let me define what I consider to be an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is not what you own, or rather yet it is what you own, but it's you owning your mind and not the business. See, a person can choose to own the business, choose to work for the business, or choose to intern for the business. But an entrepreneur is a person who owns this space between your ears. Do you own your talents, abilities, gifts, and skills? When you own that, you recognize wherever I take my talents, I might take my talents from, uh, let's just say, uh, 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 Cleveland down to uh, Miami. Yeah. If I choose to take my talents down there, that's my choice because that talent belongs to me. Yeah. And so when you recognize that the job or the business is not who you are, but where you are, yeah. that changes everything. Okay. Yes. Right? Okay. To include what happens to you. Yeah. So when things are happening to you, they're not happening against you. Mm -hmm. The storm mm -hmm. is not happening against you. The storm is actually happening for you because it is under the pressure of the storm. It is under the pressure of a pandemic. It's under the pressure of an economic un uh, unraveling or un unraveling or even social or racial uh, injustice. That's the pressure necessary for us to find out who we really are. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I find out who I am, either it confirms who I think I am or it dissipates and now I got to make those adjustments. But until I know who I am, I can't proceed and go forward. So yeah. in this season, when that pressure comes, it's not happening to work against me. It's actually happening to propel me, to make me better, to make me stronger. But yeah. I wanted to share with you was I call it um, – dots and i want to be very clear so distractions were one offenses were another but then those traumas those trauma triggers are very important mm -hmm. because we're trauma we're traumatized for different reasons it could be a a, a a client a supervisor a boss who's a little bit domineering and they remind you of a father and before you know it you go into fight flight fold or freeze so you go into these these emotions and you don't even know why you're behaving this way. Why are you operating so erratically in this environment? It's because your that trauma trigger is being manifested in that yeah. particular situation. It is designed again, dots, D O T S, distractions, offenses, trauma triggers, and self inflicted wounds. And then the last one, when we get stressed, when we get frustrated, when the world isn't going right, sometimes we reach for something, maybe it's a beverage. Maybe it's something to smoke. Maybe yeah. it's a partner. You start to do things to offset the pain. You do things to yeah. make yourself feel better. And we got to be careful, careful. I would be willing to bet you that the uh, local uh, pharmaceutical, rep the urban pharmaceutical representative is probably very um, successful these days, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'd, I'd be willing to bet he is, he is very successful right now. He's probably experiencing uh, skyrocketing sales because people are self-medicating. And so here's the trick. The trick is don't reach for that. I don't care if it's legal. Don't reach for the alcohol. Don't reach for that person. It's time to be sober and diligent and focused on what you're supposed to be doing. Yes. Yeah.
Absolutely. Whatever that is, whatever that is, trust in the God that made you, trust in the craft that's in front of you. And so I'm trusting, I'm in a position of trusting, fellas. I'm in a position of trusting and believing God because it's not cleaning carpet or carpet cleaning machine that guided me through 10 years, almost 11 years in business. It was the integrity. It was my mastery of the craft. It was my dedicated dedication to taking care of people. I didn't need a guarantee because in me is a self-imposed guarantee. I don't get paid unless I do what I said I'm going to do. Yes. Yeah. If I don't do what, I'm, what I said I was going to do, you don't have to worry about a piece of paper or a guarantee of me coming back. I won't charge you right now. Yeah. And that kind of integrity follows me. That's who I am as a person. That's in this business now. And so to the travelers, man, I'm just suggesting what's happening, what you're seeing, what you're experiencing. It's not by happenstance. It's not happening to you. It's happening for you. And it's building you. It's making you stronger. Take that thing on the chin and keep moving. Be honest, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Be honest about it. Yeah. yeah. Be honest about it. Please go on, Rick. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Love it. Travelers, Ooh. man. Man, this is episode 86, 86, right. man. And, and, and one thing that Marlon and I keep saying to you guys is that every single week, man, we're on this journey with you. That, mm. that, that's it. You know, we're not coming up and, and, and going and reading a dictionary or an encyclopedia or all these different things and saying, oh, this is, a, this is a story from somebody over here and we never met them before. We don't know anything about them or everything. Now, we're, we're bringing our real life experiences with mm. you, people that are alive right now that are going through this, that are being pioneers in their lives. Um, yes. And we're doing it for the sole purpose because we want to show you that if we can do it, then so can you. Yeah, Absolutely. You can do it. That there, there's, there's nothing that you guys cannot do, um, but there are some things that you need to do in order to realize mm -hmm. <laughs> the things uh, in your life, man. And that's what we're trying to get, get across to you. And yeah. like, like, like Keith said, you know, Brian, BK said, it is, it is not that we're professing that we have made it. We have not reached no. the mountaintop. No, sir. But I tell you no, one sir. thing, I'm looking up and I'm, and I'm climbing it. Yep. I'm every climbing. day. <laughs> every day. Every single Man, day. Every day. Getting up. Yep. And we're climbing it, you know, and, yeah. and, 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 we're, and we're resting at night and re-equipping ourselves and having conversations right. like this. Man, you guys are only hearing an hour and some change of this, but we've been talking for an hour and a half or something or more. Why? You know, yeah, we just say, hey, we got to stop and press record real quick. Why you guys <laughs> All right. It's the right. energy. It's the energy mm -hmm. that you get from people that are also striving in life, man. Right. Right. You know? Right. So we ask right. you guys to look at who you're, who you're with, you know, where you're going, you know. Right. And, um, you know, let's get on it. So, uh, BK, man, you know. Uh, we said we keep saying it. A year has passed, man. You're you're in a different season in life, yeah, man. You have shared some amazing nuggets with our oh, sure. our, our tra travelers, and we we greatly greatly appreciate it, man. Thank you. But Thank you know, as we're coming to the, the, this closing segment here, right? Mm -hmm. Um, with you, I mean, you 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 kind of you, you talk you. you you cruise right over a little bit. I want you to get a little bit more direct with it. You know, <laughs> this is not going to be your last shift. <laughs> not not going to be the one, you know, and you, and you said it before you said it, you know, you know, operate in the season that you're in, you know, operate, right. do what you have to do in that season. Yeah. But can you talk to that traveler that's out there? We have a lot of traveler people ask us, you know, one day they want to do this, next day they want to do that, the next day they want to do this and that, and, and, right. and they, ha they have, they're not centered anywhere. Right, right. But right. they Man, think I that because new, new creative things are coming to their mind, that they're moving somewhere. But all they're doing right. is running in the, on that, on that, 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 that real, wheel, yeah. that real wheel, right? right. Mouse yeah. wheel, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, can you talk I to that it. person? Real quick, I can. share some I thoughts. Can. Uh, come on, come on. Now, this is right in my wheelhouse. So to know what to do is a series of knowing what not to do. Mm -hmm. To find out who you are is a series of finding out who you're not. <laughs> to find out what works is a series of finding out what doesn't work. So what you think is chaos and confusion from the outside looking in, that person is on track to find out who they are, where they are, and what they're supposed to do, because those are the three questions of life. Why, who, what? Mm. Your, your purpose, your calling, and your gifting. 
Same exact thing. Your purpose equals your why. Your calling equals your who. And your gifting equals your what. What are you supposed to do in this life? In this life? Who am I in this world? And why am I here? Why am I supposed to be doing this? It all comes from a series of doing, making mistakes, dropping the ball, figuring out who you're not. I'll put it to you this way. There's this thing in... I don't know, entrepreneur land or business land where we stay, and you guys are familiar with it, we talk about niching down, right? Yeah. They want you to, who are you talking to? Who is your target audience? And everybody says, well, if you don't know who you're talking to, then you're not in business. I beg to differ. Mm-hmm. I beg to differ. Maybe that's true of year three or four, or maybe even year two, but when you first start something, Let me be very specific. When I first started the carpet cleaning business, the fight was not against who was I talking to. The fight was against me keeping a business going versus going back to a job. Mm. The fight wasn't about who was my customer. I didn't care who paid me as long as they paid me. (laughs) The goal was to stay afloat. So we're fighting the wrong fight. And don't let society or culture or your friends. So I got this thing that I say. I say that your ethnos and your ethos is limiting your cosmos. I am speaking Greek. I am speaking Greek. So you you didn't misunderstand me. So your ethnos is your ethnicity, right? This is the tribe you belong to. These are the people who have the same blood as you. Then you have your ethos. These are the social circles, the religious circles, or the political circles. They believe like you. So one group has your blood. One group has a belief system. But both of those groups at one point in your life may give you identity. They might tell you who you are. They may give you a prison. But when it's time to reach for what God called you to do, which is your cosmos, which means world. See, your gift is for the world. The yeah. gift is for more than your ethnos and your yes. ethos. The gift is more for, for more of the people who look like you, your mom and them, your cousin and them. The gift is for more of the people who think like you, you know, the, the, the church you go to or, or the uh, re- political affiliations. Your gift is for the world. And so sometimes your cosmos I'm sorry, your ethos and your ethnos are, are limiting your cosmos. So the people you believe like and the people that you have the same blood like are limiting who God made you to be. And in order for you to break away, even though they've gave, given you a precision on who you are, that precision is now turned into a prison. Mm. Now they're stopping you from being who you can want to be. They're stopping you from being who God called you to be. And so there's a point where you give me definition. You help me become who I was. But there's a point where I have to leave my mama's house, leave my neighborhood, leave my tribe, and become who God called me to be. And the fear is if you don't know steps one, two, three, and four, or five, and again, we're speaking to that person who feels like they're chaotic, they feel like they're confused, I'm telling you, you're in good company. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing because you're going through a series of what's wrong to find out what's right. And as you figure this thing out, slowly but surely, you're going to keep doubling down on what works. Keep doubling down on what works. Keep doubling down on what works. And yes, you walked away from a sure thing, but that sure thing wasn't a God thing. Mm. That sure thing was a limiting thing. You got to step out and become who God created you to be because inside you is the next vaccine. Inside you is the next penicillin. Inside you is the next abacus, that life-changing thing. And the only way you can create it is by stepping outside of your comfort zone. So for you to be in a place where it's confusing or chaotic or untrusting or you're surrounded by people you don't know and understand, you're actually in the best place possible. You're in a place where now you can develop your talents, abilities, gifts, and skills. You can figure out who you are on your own terms. And until you know who you are, purpose, gift, calling, you're not good to anyone. Mm. Unless the salt has its saltiness. If you don't know why you preserve me, if you don't know why you add value, if you look in the dictionary under purpose, it will say add value. A synonym for purpose is adding value. If you don't know how to add value to my life, you don't know your purpose in my life, which means you're not salt to me. Mm. And if salt doesn't preserve, salt has no value. Mm. Right. Mm. You're just taking up space now. You got to know why you're here. You got to know why you're in my world. And so to not know is the very process you go through to come into knowing, right? To come into understanding. And so to, to, to those who are confused, celebrate. 
you're in a good spot. Celebrate. Mm. See, I would be concerned if you knew all the answers. That's what I'd be concerned mm. about. Right? And so to, to put a pin in it, this is what I want to share with you. And this is definitive. So when I started the carpet rug and upholstery cleaning business, I simply wanted any customer who would call me. But over time, once I hit year two, all I cared about was taking care of the bills. Because again, the race wasn't against, against or I wasn't racing to find my target customer. I was racing to keep the business afloat. I wanted it to be a successful business. So once I hit year two or three and I started to realize, okay, wait a minute, this particular customer calls me last minute, has the dirtiest carpet in the world and wants to negotiate on the price. But we're always six degrees of separation away from the next person. So then I started going out to some other neighborhoods because I really focused on where I lived and people that look like me. Once I got away from where I lived and people who look like me, started going to some different zip codes with higher expendable income, Something changed. They didn't call me at the last minute. They needed it two weeks from now. Mm. They not only paid me what I wanted to get paid, but they tipped me on top of it. Not only did they pay me what I got wanted to get paid, but they also referred all their friends and their family to me. So I'm like, wait a minute. So I started marketing to my neighborhood and people who look like me, and I started marketing to those people. So I found year three, year four, year five, I found my target audience, mm -hmm. but I had to go through all of those other clients before I found them. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then once I found them, then I thought I was going to do better. So I tried to go higher than that, right? So then I started going to the really elite clients, the one that had their own helicopter or plane in the back. When I got to that level, they started to treat me like I had a tail between my legs. I didn't like that so much. So I had to come back down. So I didn't like the super low client. I didn't like the super high client. I liked that client that was right in the middle. The middle. That was my sweet spot. But it took me seven years to figure that out. And once I figured it out, it was smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, I would get a call. Every once in a while, somebody from your past is going to try to pull you back into what you used to be. But once I figured out what my business was at that particular point, I'm an artist in carpet cleaning. First, I started off as a guy with a business who just wanted it to work. I began to master my, my craft, Marlon. And then I was like, you know what? I'm an artist and cleaner. I know what I'm doing now. Mm. I'm pretty good at this thing. So now I started to appeal. I started to use every quote unquote um, negative thing about my business and I turned it into an advantage. So you're a one man band. You got one truck. OK, well, I'm an artisan carpet cleaner and I provide a custom carpet cleaning environment for every one of my customers. I'm mm. the only one that's going to answer the phone. I'm the one that's going to come. <laughs> I'm the one that's going to do the work. I'm the one that you can hold accountable. How about that, man? There you go. And I put my face on the side of the truck. Yes. Right. So now I turn a weakness into a strength. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And yes. so now instead of them calling services by fleet carpet rug and upholstery cleaning, you were calling Brian the carpet cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So take whatever you got. And again, we're talking to that person who's in that, they're in that gray area. You're not all the way over there. You're not all the way over here. Hey, keep on pushing, keep on walking don't worry about step 10 all i need you to do is give me step one yeah once you give me that step one give me another step one once you give me another step one give me another step one and if you keep giving me a series of step ones eventually you've already taken 10 steps i just need to get one step please mm, man i love the answer one oh, step please. Uh, please. I, I, one step please I, I like the i love the answer um you talked about honesty you talked about um understanding yourself and if you don't give any value to the space you're in what okay. good are you what good are you what good are you you know it's funny you know when I, well, through this pandemic um looking at the economy you know you had bezos on one side right you had, you had amazon and all these guys and mm. then you had somebody let's Good take point. somebody like american airlines you know on on the stock market everybody's like when, when these guys were telling you listen this is the amount for my share. One was lying and one wasn't. <laughs> I like that. Right? I because like that. as you see, one is saying right now, hey, if you guys don't give me a bailout, I'm going to fire 30,000 people. So wow. that's what American Airlines is saying. Bezos right. is like, oh, <laughs> the pandemic, I'm going to double my net worth. Wow. He did. He did that. Yeah. He did that. So mm -hmm. he wasn't lying when he said, my company is valued this. 
I like that. So a lot of times when, what, what you said was super important. If you're in somewhere and you're lying about your value, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're going to get exposed. And yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you have no- we are going to find out. Yeah. We are going to find out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I would like to say to that person, once we find out, Rick, once we find out, pressure always comes to reveal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Even mm. if even in the pandemic, if you've fallen apart, even if you press pause in mid March and you haven't even looked back at the plans you had back in January, it's still not over for you. As long as you can recognize I made a mistake, I got emotional, Correct. I let the distractions take me out because I want you to realize that the dots, the distractions, the offenses, the trauma triggers and the self inflicted wounds are only coming to people who have value to begin with. Mm. Yeah, yeah. The only reason you're double team or triple team is because you are obviously Michael Jordan. You're obviously LeBron James out here. Right. So the value sometimes we have to get from the opposition. Sometimes I got to look in your eyes, the fear in your eyes, for me to recognize that I must have something in me that's worth investigating, worth yeah. digging deeper for. And so, yes, I'm having a conversation with you about a business I started when I was 37, 35, 36, 37. But you got to probably know about some of the stuff I did prior to 35, that I didn't come out looking like a lion. Mm. I didn't sound too confident. You know, I got to tell you about the limousine business I had. I had some (laughs) successes there, right? But I did mess up a few times or the the lawn care business I had or the graphic design business I had. So (laughs) so even in that, right, all of those things taught me and prepared me for what I was able to be. It's very successful in terms of the – and then another reason to answer your question, Marlon, why didn't I sell it? Because, you know, logically, Linda, why not sell it? Because if I sold it, I'm the five-star guru. I didn't want you to change because you couldn't do what I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm telling you, my mom just texted me and said, son, you had me spoiled. She just got a carpet clean. She just had a carpet clean. She said, you had me spoiled. I had no idea. I thought that was just standard. No, 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 mama. I'm, I'm that guy. I'm that dude, mama. <laughs> Whatever I touch. Mama, mama, I'm that man. Whatever I touch. <laughs> and, so, and so what she told me was that uh, there's a level of mastery that you can put on anything that you do. And, I, and now that mastery is connected to Brian Keith. So no matter what I touch, and I'm speaking to the travelers now, make sure whatever you touch, even if you don't know it, you can still do it in an excellent way. Yeah. You can still show up on time and on task and in uniform. You still can go home and memorize the menu. I don't care if you're a server. I don't care if you're sweeping the floor. Sweep it with all your might because that next level does not come, right? We talked about, or I alluded to it earlier, and I talked about how purpose never changes, but our the, Im- the amount of the purpose that God reveals to us does change over time. Yeah. The way that we get more information about the purpose is that we become, we pass the test that are in front of us. Yeah. Right. And this coronavirus, this economic upheaval, the racial injustice, they're all tests. Yeah. They're all tests. All yeah. tests, man. They're all tests. And the goal is, again, like we can't stress this enough, the goal is to take your purpose. It's your purpose. So, yeah. That's it's it. your hope. It's your peace. Yeah, I'm sorry, Rick. Go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 man. This is this is great, man. This is what the travelers. This is what they want, man. And we really appreciate you. Yeah, this is what they need. Yeah, and we appreciate you just spending some time with us today and just just breaking it down to us, man. Just catching up, man. Catching yeah. up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man. Like we're sitting on the couch man. Hey, are, are you? Were you in the military? No, I wasn't. I know what. I've no. been accused of it many times, but no, I wasn't. Because you use acronyms like how we use acronyms in the military, man. You got an acronym for everything. I love it. I yeah, love it. I keep things simple. Because I should have went. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 after you. No, I should have went. I, I probably would have been very successful. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love yeah, the acronyms, yeah. man. Dots, uh, pictures. Uh, I, I was yeah, like, yeah. I love that. Hey. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now I want to be respectful of your time, guys. I know you guys on the no, East Coast is well man. after ten for you. Um, no, no. It's only nine for me, so I, I don't want to waste. Too, I don't want to take too much of your time. So let me know what are the final thoughts that you kind of want to, you know, throw out there, or what are you guys thinking? No, you man. I, I think we hit it, man. I, I think we hit okay. it. We, we left so many yeah. nuggets, man, for these travelers today, man. And um, I mean, one thing we want them to be able to do is, of course press rewind but 
every time yeah. they listen to this thing, they're going to get something fresh out of it. To ah, the, the multiple that's areas good. that we went this, um, today uh, with this episode and, and travelers, you know, I just want to always remind you that, Hey, you know, we're here every week, but we're also here in the middle of the week and you can catch us on the social media platforms. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Instagram, all those different areas. And, and like we already told you last week, we're not on there because we, we, we just want to be on there and show what we got to do because that's not even our thing. <laughs> you know, we're on there to get the message out there uh, mm -hmm. to the world. And, you know, we'll put uh, Brian Keith's uh, information back in our description, note description. Thank so you, you can li link up with him on his social media platforms, website, everything, man. And, and actually go ahead and mention it again for those that are listening right now and they can't get to the notes, Brian. Absolutely. It's very simple. Um, follow me on Instagram at Brian Keith 360, B R I A N K E I T H. 360, and that's the same for the website, 360.com, Brian Keith, at Brian Keith on all social media. And so, yeah, definitely follow me on Instagram. I want to stay connected. I love being around like-minded people, and there's so much I want to learn. So much. Yes, now. yes, yes. Once again, if you guys are listening to this in the car by audio, um, when you go home, go over to uh, uh, YouTube. You'll see what we look like. Um, that's he was talking about the different hues that were <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> So you can actually put a face to the voice. Yeah, and, I'm a minority this week. <laughs> I mean, we're not right. going to bring that up. Why I'm, I'm the right. minority this week? <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I mean, hey, lucky, lucky, and minority. Lucky, right. I'm envious. I'm jealous. You know, <laughs> I'm jealous. Yeah, I think they refer to refer to it as a main. Is that what they yeah, call it? A main. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, out. in all areas, face and head. Right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, I truly enjoyed this. Uh, I enjoyed it, but I truly enjoyed this episode, and I was reminded again uh, 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 why uh, people people did gravitate to that um, number thirty nine. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. absolutely. You, you speak from the heart, and yeah, what we're talking about with Gizmo in the beginning, and you asked me a question: What makes Gizmo different? And everybody didn't. Gizmo is a, a guy we interviewed that plays pickleball. Wow. And I said that he's somebody that's generally want to help somebody with nothing in return. Right. right. And when I asked you about the business and why didn't you sell it off, you said, hey, I want it to be a blessing to somebody else. Yeah. yeah. And you could definitely see within you that you have that same quality that you want to help out people. And just because you have the information, you want to get it out to them. Right. Able to help right. you and um, I commend you for that. I commend you. For thank that. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Honor. It's yep. a high honor. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I do have a final thought, though. Go ahead, man. Lay it on us. Yep. Okay. So I um, yesterday morning in my quiet time with the Lord, I um, my aunt, who I haven't spoken to in about two years, um, came to mind. Now I've known her since I was a little boy. I've always known who she was. I've known her for forty-seven years. And she was really heavy on my mind. And my uncle, which is actually the person that I'm related to, he died um, January 2018. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a couple of years since I spoke to her. Last time I spoke to her, maybe a text or two, was at the funeral. And she's one of my favorite aunts. And she was very heavy on my mind, very heavy on my mind yesterday morning. And so I just reached out to her. And it's been some time. So this would have been a text out of the blue. And I text her and I reminded her of me and my little brother staying at her house. They lived in Arkansas. We lived in Texas. But my mother decided for us to stay there for a summer. And the reason why staying there that summer was so significant was because my parents were separated. Mm. So in that moment, my uncle and my aunt were my surrogate parents. Mm. And they gave us a sense of stability when we didn't have the stability at home. Right. Yeah. And I reminded her now that I'm a grown man and I can look back and understand what that was. I just thanked her for being that rock for me at that moment. It's something I actually mentioned at the funeral. And so I mentioned that to her in the text message and she texted me back and she was I could tell it was deeply emotional and deeply impactful for her. And she said, today would have been 47 years of marriage mm. with your uncle. I did not know that this was their anniversary. Wow. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. My point of sharing that story to you, for you or with you is that sometimes we get so caught up in the money 
we, the big house, the big car, the big bank account, the career. We get caught up in STEM. We get caught up in being the first, maybe the first person of color to work at this company at this particular level. And all of that stuff is wonderful. I'm not telling you not to chase that. Please chase the desires of your heart. But what I'm saying to you is that at the end of the day, what matters and has the most impact is who we are to other people. It's not the money. It's not the fortune. It's not the fame. Are you available? Are you available? In that moment, those few words to my aunt meant everything. Mm. No amount of money could have provided her with that feeling. The reassurance to know that after 47 years, something that you sold into a little boy, after 40 years, something you sold into a little seven-year-old boy has blossomed, has gained. I'm a good man. And I told my aunt, I'm a good man because of you. Mm. I'm a good husband because of you. I'm a good father because of you. I'm a kind man and a generous man because of you. But when you can let people know that they mean something to you, that they matter to you, that their that their seed that they sold into your heart has blossomed and bloomed, and you sold seed into other people, it's better than money. So mm. purpose, purpose, fellas, that's what we've been talking about. Purpose always trumps money. Mm. Mm. And travelers, man, just like we say every single week, we'll see you next week at the same time at the same time <laughs> on the Success Journey Show. BK, we love you, man. Appreciate you, for you man. being with us this week. Everyone have a good You've one. You've been listening Peace. to the Success Journey Show, where your dreams, drive, determination, and diligence are the foundation to success. For more information, check out thesuccessjourneyshow.com. The Journey Squad is here helping you to your destination.